Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'm very glad that my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, has been listening to a few of the things I've said over the last three years, and bringing strategic alignment to foreign policy is something that many of us have been calling for. So I must say I welcome this, and indeed it brings us into line, as he's already said, with Kansuk countries, my Australian opposite number, who I spoke to only an hour or so ago, praised this decision, as did my Canadian opposite number. This also brings us into line with Norway and Denmark, two countries very well known for delivering effective aid programmes, not just in their own national interest, but in the interests of the people they serve. So I welcome this decision. May I, however, ask that he reinforces the commitment that this is to deliver the technical expertise that DFID has demonstrated over 23 years. And just as you would not ask an ambassador to command a battle group, you wouldn't ask somebody untrained to have handling or delivery of the millions of pounds that are so well and so effectively spent by people in East Kilbride and actually around the world on our behalf. Abs- absolutely, Mr. Speaker, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, with his experience of uh, foreign affairs he, and, and development, he does and uh, all that he's seen around the world. He does support this initiative. And it's absolutely vital that uh, in the new department, uh, people are multi-skilled and people understand that, uh, as I said uh, just down to the House, that people in the, in the Department for uh, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Affairs understand how development can be a fantastic tool for the promotion, uh, not just of human rights and the tackling of poverty around the world, but also of promoting the values and interests of this country at the same time. And that, I think, is what the people of this country want to see. Heading to